Hello, everybody. This is Bob Tronjo, and uh, we're in the reading room. So glad to be with you uh, finally and be able to get uh, a reading room session out to you. Uh, thank you for taking time out uh, and being with us tonight as we read from Jonathan Mitchell's New Testament Greek rendering. Uh, and we're in the book of Ephesians, uh, the fourth chapter. So we're going to uh, continue tonight uh, where we left off the last time. Um, uh, I, I really uh, appreciate your prayers and appreciate your holding fast uh, to the Lord for me. And I'm, I'm doing uh, fairly well. I'll be having carpal tunnel surgery on my left hand uh, on Monday. So uh, uh, if you don't mind praying for me for that, that would be fine. Hopefully that will do something with my fingers of my left hand. Right now I can't play the guitar, um, and it's very, very painful. Uh, but uh, God knows, and God uh, uh, has a plan in it all, so uh, I, I rest in that. Amen. Um, so we're going to go to prayer and ask the Lord to bless this tonight and uh, um, pray that God will uh, help us tonight. Father, we do cry out for your uh, help, Lord. And we're reminded, uh, Almighty God, that without you, we are unable to do anything. But Lord, through you, we can do all things. So Father, I'm asking you tonight, not just for the speaker, but also for the listeners, Lord, that you will lift us up on high, that, God, we will take our place in the heavenlies, seated together in your presence, Lord, that, Lord, your word will be opened up unto us, and that, Father, your word will minister to us life and that more abundantly. I'm asking you, God, that you will take center stage and that, Lord, whatever happens uh, tonight, whatever's said or whatever's done, Lord, may it be to the glory of your Son, Jesus Christ, and to the furtherance of your kingdom, O God. We thank you for your mercy and your grace, your salvation so rich and so free. We thank you, Lord, that you gave your life, Jesus, for all men everywhere, and that, Lord, throughout the ages to come, you will bring all men to know you, and that, God, every one born of a woman will take their place in your kingdom, almighty God. What a God, what a mighty God you are, and I'm praying for a mighty stirring in the hearts of your people as the time that is upon us draws to an eminent uh, closure uh, uh, because we're in the uh, time in you, Lord, where uh, uh, things that have been kept secret are going to be made known and that, Lord, what's been said and done in secret will be shouted from the housetops. Oh, hallelujah. So, Lord, let us be faithful in our calling, in our choosing. I ask you, Lord, that your people will mount up on wings of an eagle and take flight and be strengthened. I ask you, Lord, that they will be filled with the Holy Ghost and be set on fire. Hallelujah. And that, God, you will do your work in us. Lord, that we will stay and endure to the end of this great plan of God. That, Lord, nothing, no angel, no demon, no man, nor woman, nor things above, nor things beneath will keep us from doing what the Lord would have for us to do. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. I ask you for your spirit to flow in your people, Lord, and so that they might draw from that power within them, and that, oh God, they will do exploits for you in the days ahead. 
Prepare us, Lord. Let your word instruct us. Let your word enable us. You moved upon uh, the apostle Paul in his day. You moved upon him and all the other writers of the New Testament, Lord. You moved upon them by your spirit in order to give us encouragement and strength and to out line your plan for us, Lord. And God, I thank you for uh, for what you're doing in our hearts today. So we give you the glory, the praise, and the honor. In Jesus Christ, we pray, amen and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we're glad. Uh, thank you, honey. Uh, of course, uh, Bob and Dean and I both are... Um, uh, our feet are smelling and our nose is running. And we need a change, Lord. We yeah. need a change. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Um, but it's just the way it is. Oh, my Lord. Uh, we have to be able to... Um, no, I'm not seeing this on uh, my phone, so I'm hoping and praying. I saw it on my phone. Okay, good. I see it now. Praise the Lord. I just had to refresh it. Uh, it's, it's, uh, I doubt if uh, very many of you are able to read lips. So we want to have sound when we're ministering so that you can actually know what we're saying. Praise God. Hallelujah. But we're going to uh, start at the uh, 22nd verse in um, uh, Jonathan Mitchell's um, New Testament Greek rendering, and uh, uh, I've gone back a few verses so that we can get a context of where we were at when we ended last time, uh, but uh, I'll just read the bold uh, print uh, so that uh, I can go through this a little faster just as a, a, a refresher, and then we'll start uh, normally once we get to, I believe it was the 25th verse. Anyway, in the 22nd verse, Paul writes, to put off from yourselves what accords to the former entangled manner of living, the old humanity, the one continuously in process of being corrupted. And I pray and, and hope that each one of you understands that uh, there is that part of us uh, that is corruptible and uh, it leads us and brings us into a entangled manner of living. It's entangled by the desires of the flesh, by uh, the uh, fruits of the flesh, uh, malice, anger, uh, uh, wrath, uh, um, temptation, uh, all of those, uh, uh, those aspects uh, of the fruit of the flesh, and it brings us into further and further entanglement. You know, that's what uh, lies do. You lie once, and then how, uh, what, what happens? You have to tell another lie to cover up that lie. And pretty soon, you're lying your head off just to stay in front of the one lie you told. And it gets entangled. So we want to come out of the entanglement of our former life and uh, knowing that it is in the process of being continually corrupted worse and worse as we go along. It's something to see in the Old Testament where in the uh, uh, book of Genesis, it lists the, uh, the, uh, the lineage uh, of Israel, and it starts out uh, with uh, Adam, and then uh, it goes into uh, Seth, and then uh, into uh, Enoch and then into Methuselah, and they're living all, uh, 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 the others lived almost a thousand years. And uh, Methuselah, of course, lived uh, more than any of them. 
Uh, but then, as you read, the, uh, the lifespan goes down uh, the further out from Adam you go. And uh, that's because it is a progressive corruption. So now we see a world uh, that is thoroughly corrupted on every hand. It's a perverse generation. And uh, darkness prevails uh, over the minds of the people. Uh, even the religious, uh, religious minded people are full of darkness, uh, uh, um, cloudiness, and greed, and lust, and all of the, uh, all of the fruit of the flesh that we see uh, in, ba in, in Babylon uh, is, the f is the same as the fruit of the, uh, uh, of, of the flesh in the world. So uh, it, it all genders to that same thing. But it is progressive and it worsens as it goes along. So Paul is saying, put off from yourselves uh, this, uh, 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 what accords and what relates to the former entangled manner of living of the old humanity. The one continuously in process of being corrupted down from and in accord with the passionate desires of the deceptions. And then, Paul writes, to be continuously renewed by the spirit of your mind and to enter within with the new humanity. The old humanity must give way to the new humanity, the one in accord with and corresponding to God, being formed within the way pointed out. How many is glad for the way pointed out to us that Jesus isn't leaving us wandering in the wilderness like Israel, but every step of the way, the Spirit of the Lord is pointing out the way, and Jesus is the way, the truth, the life, amen, hallelujah, and reverent dedication uh, pertaining to the truth. So I pray that that will refresh us of what Paul is saying, is that he is saying, leave off the old, cling to the new, and let the new man the new humanity within you start to live out within you. So now he says in the 25th verse, Wherefore, upon at once, putting the false away, another rendering me says, being folks having at one point set the lie off. You know, we hear about the big lie today in politics. Well, the big lie in God is that eat of this fruit and you shall be as God's. You shall be as he is. Uh, the big lie uh, uh, is that uh, our mind has been uh, subjected unto vanity. And we are brought under an illusion uh, of, of deception. So we have uh, uh, taken off from us and set the lie off. We have, we have allowed the spirit to change our mind, to be translated into the kingdom of God by the renewing of our mind. Hallelujah. Now, uh, here, I want you to understand the basic concept of the kingdom of God. Renewal, a reformation. Um, what's another? Uh, uh, the, uh, the, the prefix of that and other terms that I can't bring to my mind right now is the prefix R-E. Re. So whenever you hear it say renew, what does that mean? It means that at one time we were new. 
and we took on an old uh, man and now we are going back to the beginning where we were without sin, where we were innocent in God, where our uh, uh, house and our heart and our mind were all upon Jesus. Hallelujah. So let us be renewed by the transforming of our minds. Amen. Uh, and, 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 and that is the whole principle here. Let us be reconciled. Let us be reconciled. Reconciled. Uh, that, that literally means uh, let us go back to where our account was paid, where we had no debt, where we were not in the debt of sin and of confusion and of death, but we are being brought back to a time of reconstitution. Let us return back to where our, con our original constitution was in effect. Oh, hallelujah. Let God bring you back to a time before uh, you started allowing uh, the world to captivate you. Before the time that you knew more about disobeying God than you did obeying him. Let God take you back to a time before sin and before shame and bring you back to the time where you were in the presence of God. Oh, hakoraba sandahaya. Where you basked in the presence of the Lord. Where you didn't run from God, but you ran into God. Where you didn't count him as somebody to be afraid of, but you knew and you were born of love. Hallelujah in God. Let this be your return back to him. Hallelujah. Amen. So he's saying, wherefore upon at once putting away the false away from yourselves, having at one point set the lie off as clo clothing or habits, you folks be continuously speaking truth and reality. Oh, hallelujah. Each one with his associate, the one near him, his neighbor. You folks be continuously, without break, be continuously speaking truth. Truth, dear ones, hallelujah. Truth hurts, but truth will make you free. Glory to God. And, and we all need to hear the truth to know the truth and the reality that we are living in in this day. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Each one with his associate, the one near him, his neighbor. We have an obligation, you know, to those nearest to us. I know a lot of ministries who spend all their time ministering to people who are afar off and to strangers and they have forgotten that they have a family Amen. that needs to be ministered to. Yes. They need their father's love. They need their mother's love. They need to be ministered to as much as anyone else does yes. more so than. Yes. Hallelujah. So let us take that to heart. Let's spend more of our time ministering to our family, our children, our grandchildren, yes. our aunts and our uncles, yes. those who, are, who, uh, who, who need to know the truth and the reality. Praise the Lord. So he says, because we are, we continually exist being members as of a body of one another. Oh, hallelujah. Another rendering says limbs or body parts belonging to one another and having our source in each other. Now that is a lost uh, principle. 
uh, we today are living in an age where everyone's out for themselves. And they have forgotten that we are all one body. They are, they are getting off in their cliques, in their fractions, and they are getting, because they don't want to fool around with having to minister to people who don't look like them or talk like them or in their own minds aren't as righteous as them, so they don't want to fool around with people anymore that have real needs. They want to minister to people who are already whole. Uh, but the physician comes for those who are infirm, sick, in need of help, of, a, of an administration of health, of healing, hallelujah. So let us remind ourselves of this as we go on in this great day of the Lord. We are all physicians in God. And, and we may not have exactly the same uh, Hippocratic, uh, I think that's how you say it, uh, oath as what the medical doctors do in, the, in modern times. Uh, where they take an oath not to, uh, to hold back their gift of healing from anyone by reason of, of, of finances or by reason of personal uh, vendettas or anything like that. They keep, take an oath that they will always be available to administer their healing uh, abilities to anyone in need. So I, I, I feel like... Uh, we need that kind of a thing in ourselves because, because so many ministries don't want to be bothered by these uh, uh, ones that are obviously in need of knowing Jesus. So there's so much work that has to be done in our hearts as we go along. And I believe this is what Paul is hitting at in these verses. So in the 26th verse, he says, you folks be habitually aroused by the internal pulse of life. Habitually, I like that word used when it comes to our walk in God and to our ministry in God. You folks be habitually. Have you ever been around someone who is habitually addicted, addicted, and they have a habit of taking drugs or drinking alcohol or overeating or sexual addictions. It is a habit that every one of them will tell you I can't help myself. It's beyond my ability to say no. Don't you want to have that same habit in God when it comes to obeying the Lord? Well, I couldn't help myself. I had to go to China to minister the word. We were just watching Corey Ten Bloom. Is that her name? I may have butchered that up. Is that, did I get it right? Catherine Coleman was interviewing Corey Ten Boom. Yeah, Catherine Coleman was interviewing uh, Corey Ten Boom on YouTube. It's an old video. And, um, uh, and, and her missionary work, oh my Lord, what all the things that she had to go through. Well, I'll tell you, she couldn't do anything else. That was a habit. It was an addiction to put herself in a place in God where God could use her for people who meant her harm. She could not deny that. She could not say, oh, I'm going back home. She had to do what she had to do. And this is what Paul is saying. You folks now be habitually aroused. Let yourselves be habitually stirred by the internal pulse 
of life. Have you ever felt that internal pulse of life, dear one? That internal flow of spirit, that heartbeat of God within you, hallelujah, that you knew that that was not you, but it was the pulse coming from a new man within you, hallelujah, from a mighty God who was within you, from those things that were within you that had the character and the essence of God, hallelujah. You folks be habitually excuse me, aroused by the internal pulse of life. Another rendering on that says, be constantly impulsive in reaction. I love this. I'm telling you, I love it. My Lord, I can't hardly minister because I'm having such a, a, a blessing within me from this. Or another rendering says, be constantly impulsive in reaction to your natural disposition and character. Another rendering says, continue corporately being made indignant or even angry. Yet be not folks continuously missing the target making mistakes, sinning, failing, erring, deviating. Let's not be that. Let's be those who are constantly in reaction, impulsive to our natural position and character. In other words, don't think too highly of your natural self no matter what other people talk to you about, no matter how many pats on the back you get. Paul knew who he was. He was a corruptible man. He was a religious and blind uh, man, sat at the foot of Gamaliel, and he thought himself perfect when it came to the law. And when Jesus appeared unto him, and when he had a change within himself, I believe that he despised that natural man that others thought so highly of because of his uh, character and uh, uh, because of his disposition, his loyalty to Rome. Paul saw himself as lost and undone without Jesus. So don't have this kind of a reaction to your own self and understand that you can't stay at peace with your natural self, but you have to have a war within yourself and battle those natural impulses, those natural desires. Wage war against it and and raise the banner of love and of victory over everything within us that would uh, be against God and against his plan for creation. Hallelujah. I believe that's the essence of what Paul is wanting Uh, the people of his age to know and the people of this age to know. So don't be continuously missing the target. Don't, Don't just fling an arrow out there and say, well, I've done my due diligence. I can't do it. How about that? As though I didn't know that. I missed the mark again. Oh, There I go again. I missed the mark. Oh, there you go. Once again, I'll go back to being a poor, addicted, habitual uh, uh, sinner. Uh, And then a light bulb comes on and we realize somebody reveals to us a messenger of God might come our way and say, did you know that you don't have to be a slave to sin? 
Did you know that Jesus instituted another law that supersedes yeah. the law of sin and death? And that he established the law of spirit and life. Oh, hallelujah. And you don't have to be a prisoner. You don't have to give uh, your due to your past. You don't have to stay under condemnation. Oh, hallelujah, dear ones. Listen to the word of the Lord. You don't have to be habitually uh, performing over and over and over again the acts of missing the target over and over and over. But let God start giving you that habitual disposition of excellence so that you start hitting the mark over and over and over again. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. That's what Jesus did for us, dear ones. So let's not let it be for nothing, amen? Do not let sun be repeatedly setting upon your angry mood. Another rendering says, on the provoking as exasperation, irritation, or embittered anger at the side of you folks. Let's not be bitter about how our life has been. Let's, let's, let's stop living. And I have people actually coming before me right now in the spirit. I can see their faces. And they're people that I know. and one in particular that Bobby Jean knows. And they are constantly angry, constantly yelling. They come in the house yelling. Do you know folks like that? They lose their temper over and over and over again. They cause chaos. And they can't help themselves. They want to be better, but they are habitually addicted to a disposition that comes from a old humanity. And they have not made that, that uh, move, that, uh, uh, that what, I'm trying to find the word for it, they have not been able to have that conversion from the old humanity to the new humanity. And that's what God wants to do for each and every one of us. He wants to show us and bring us into contact with the new man, the new humanity. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. And he is wanting to give us another nature. Yes. Oh, glory to God. And dear one, it's yours. It's yours. You don't even know it, but it's yours. Bought, paid for, lock, stock, barrel. Yours. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All you need to do is start walking in it. All you need to do is believe God that every day you're going to have less of the old man and more of the new man living within you. Hallelujah. And that is our lot in Christ. All of our lots are, in, are that in Christ that we will progressively become progressively become a new creature in Christ. Woo, hallelujah. Don't you love them tonight? Oh, hallelujah. Neither, he says, be folks constantly sub uh, supplying nor repeatedly giving a place or position. So don't go on allowing Opportunity, uh, another rendering says, a chance or a room in which to expand. So, so Paul is saying, 
Don't be the folks that con constantly supply and give a place or position for this to happen. For the person who thrusts things through folks or situations, another rendering says the slanderer, the adversary, the accuser, the devil. Another rendering, that which casts harm or division through the midst of folks. That's what the devil does. That's what the accuser does, the adversary. Another uh, uh, a book that we were reading uh, out of Jonathan Mitchell's uh, is either Romans or Hebrews. I believe it was Romans. Where it's, it, 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 it says that the enemy throws something into the midst of God's people like a, a, a bowling ball or a stone. It throws an object into the midst of God's people and disperses them. Turns one against the other. And that's what the enemy does. So let us not give place to that. Amen. Let us be the peacemakers. Let us be the better ones, the more excellent ones, who will not hold things over one another, who forgive and forget, yeah. who are able to go on and help those who have had uh, uh, feelings of, uh, of animosity toward us uh, I'll never forget in Romans where, where Paul, it got me under conviction. I'll tell you that. It really got me under conviction. Uh, Paul said, do you have enemies? Cook a meal for them. Invite them over to your house. Feed them a meal. Meet their needs. Do everything for them that, that you can. And you're thinking in your flesh, oh man, no, I'd rather punch him in the nose. I'd rather uh, yell at him or do things like that. Anything but be nice to them. <laughs> but that's what Paul, Paul sincerely believes this. Yes. He, he believes this is the Christ life. Yes. He believes this is how we become a new man. By going to the extremes of not allowing the enemy, the adversary, to separate us, to divide us, to throw something into our midst, an accusation that causes us to turn our backs on one another. Can you hear it tonight? That is what Paul is wanting us to know. So in the 28th verse it says, let the person habitually stealing no longer continue stealing. That's his habit. But Christ has given us the power to have a new mind and a new heart. So you don't need to keep stealing. Christ is going to fill up your lack Whatever caused you to steal in the first place, he is going to fill that up with himself. So let the person habitually stealing no longer continue stealing, but rather let him or her be normally spent with labor, constantly working, performing, doing the business of the good the profitable, the virtuous, the quality by his or her own hands. Why do people steal? Because it's free. They don't have to work for it. They don't have a job because stealing is easier for them. And so they continue being corrupt because this has become a way of life in them. If they were offered a job, 
they wouldn't work it. Because they, they have come to be addicted to the work, to the, uh, to stealing another person's possessions that they themselves have worked for. So Paul's saying, steal no more, but get, get a job. You don't have a job in the natural, work for God. Hallelujah. Be virtuous in what you're doing. Amen. Don't uh, think that you need to continue in this way of life. And stealing is more than just natural. Uh, there's a lot of things in the spirit that people steal. They steal the glory of God. They can steal another person's reputation. Uh, you know, God is wanting us to become mindful of what the walk of a son of God is. What a priest and a king, after the order of Melchizedek, what has to be done within them before they can ever actually rule and reign as a priest king. Uh, right now, I don't see anyone that's, that's in that position where God can hand over that kind of power to because we are all subject to our past still. Amen. Uh, but are we improving? I pray we are. Are we progressing in Christ? I pray we are. That's the plan. That's the goal. That's what God is investing within us, that we are going to progressively become more and more like him. Praise God. Boy, my wife can make some good coffee. Good coffee. Okay, now, um, but let him or her be normally spent with labor, constantly working the good, the profitable, the virtuous, the quality by his or her own hands to the end that he or she can continuously have or possess something in order to repeatedly share with the one constantly having a need. We want to be super abundantly blessed by God so that we can be super abundantly bl a blessing unto yes. others. The more that God gives to us, yes. the more that we can help others with. Amen. So that should be our prayer. Lord, bring your super abundance into my life, into my spirit, into my mind, into my soul, so that I can minister unto all those that are without, that have a need in you, Lord. And that is our prayer tonight, that, Lord, you would super abundantly bless us above all of our expectations so that we can start to become a constant flow of life unto all those who, are we, around, who we are around. And I'm praying for each and every one of us, Lord, that we will be a storehouse that we will be able to be drawn out from by the need in others yes. and that that need will be met, Lord Jesus. Let it be done. Let it be done. Oh, thank you, Lord. 29th verse says, do not continue allowing every rotten word. <laughs> I love it. Oh, hallelujah. I just love it. So do not continue allowing every rotten word 
Another rendering says putrefied idea. Haven't we all had them? Amen. Bad quality message. Bad quality message. God help us to have a quality yes. message. Yes, Woo! Yes. I felt the power in that. God grant that the ministries of the kingdom message would start to expect to have a quality message yes. instead of rotten words and putrefying ideas. And let us not continue having unprofitable communication. Yes. Let our communication be profitable. Yes, Lord. Let it be, even if it's criticism, let it be constructive criticism. Yes. Yes, let it be to uh, encourage and uphold one another, yes. not beat a, a, each other down. Do not continue having unfit thought to be proceeding or issuing out of the mouth of you folks. I think Paul believes that the church at Ephesus is having some problems. I believe he has discerned that there's a lot of loose tongues And that he has seen that they are not all for each other. Would you would you come to that? Uh, would you surmise that to be the case as we read this? Well, he's not just talking to the church at Ephesus. Paul knows every one of us is facing these same things. Yeah. I know I am. Yeah. But rather, if anything is good profitable, virtuous, having quality, speak it toward house construction, building up, edification, ooh, glory, which pertains to the need, to the end that it may impart or that it can give favor to and grace among those listening and hearing. I have nothing to bring to you, dear ones, except Jesus and him crucified. Yeah. That's my message to you, that Christ is for you and not against you. Amen. That he is wanting you to be improved, that he is wanting you to be blessed, that he is wanting you to know joy and peace and, 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 and long suffering, that God is wanting you to be able to walk in the path of life so that you can start be a life giver. Instead of a death giver, amen, hallelujah. Grant it, Lord, hallelujah. Grant it amongst all of us, Lord. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. So those of you listening and hearing, I pray that the word, the message that God has given to us, that it will build you up, that it will be a house constructing word. Yes. Glory. 30th verse says, also... Don't you folks have the habit of grieving, distressing? What was that word that you had, uh, Bobby Jean, over the, uh, the definition of the word distress? It was despair. Oh, despair. And it was the uh, lack of... Uh, total absence of hope. Total absence of hope is despair. I'm sorry. This is distressing giving sorrow or pain to or troubling. Don't let this habit of grieving, giving sorrow or pain or troubling, God set apart spirit or the holy breath effect, which is God, within whom or in union with, with which you folks were or are 
sealed, at one point stamped with a seal, suddenly marked, imprinted, personally authorized. That's what the seal is. Sealed by the Spirit, the set-apart Spirit of God, into the midst of a day associated with and arising from the liberation of releasing away from slavery or imprisonment. Woo, glory. Rendering says a day which is emancipation pertaining to a dismissal and a loosing away into a freeing from bondage. Can you see the fetters falling off? Can you hear the chains breaking off of God's people? As the Spirit of the Lord raises up in the house, as the Word of the Lord comes forth out of an obedient priesthood, can you hear those prison doors creaking open and the prisoners being ushered out, hallelujah, with a, a proclamation of freedom, hallelujah, amen. Can we hear it? today. I pray we can. So let every bitterness, swelling negative emotion, inherent fervor, or natural propensity, disposition, and impulse, or wrath. Let every emotion of this enraged impulse, clamorous outcry, and blasphemy, slanderous, abusive, or light-hindering speech, malignment, vilifying defamation, harm, everment, be at once lifted up and removed. Hikarababahaya and removed in the name of Jesus I command it to be removed from all of us be gone in the name of Jesus oh God let your spirit set your people free let them no longer be answering to this kind yes, of a disposition. He yes. Let it be removed. Be at once lifted up and removed from you folks yes. together with all worthlessness that which ought not to be. Oh God, we're hanging on to these words. Yes, we're believing them for us. Yes, it's your word, Lord. That which is of bad quality, malice, ugliness, badness, depravity. Oh, hallelujah. 32nd verse. And keep on becoming kind, folks. Keep on becoming kind, folks. Let's make this a commitment in us. Can you do that with me? Can we agree to be together on that? Yes. And just keep on keeping on becoming kind folks. Yes. Another rendering says, so progressively come to be useful and obliging ones. Don't you want to be useful in the kingdom of God? Yes. Don't you want to be more than a backbiter? Don't you want to be more than just someone who constantly dredges up negative things about your brother or sister? Don't you want to be more than a gossiper or someone that's being used by the adversary in order to cause confusion and stress upon your brothers and sisters in the Lord? Amen. So why don't you keep on becoming kind folks? and progressively come to be useful and obliging ones. You can do that. Just let the Spirit of the Lord come upon you, yes. and you can do it. Yes. Hallelujah, it's yours. Unto one another, 
people who are tenderly compassionate. Folks constantly dealing graciously. You know what the word gracious and graceful? Graceful means full of grace. Now, a ballerina can be graceful in the natural. Her movements bring a pleasure to anyone watching her dance. And the beauty of the flow of her body is uh, graceful in itself. But to be graceful in Christ means that we are in fluidity. We are flowing with beauty and with grace. Hallelujah. We are grace. Glory to God. And anyone that comes under our, the sound of our voice or comes into our presence, we are to bestow upon them our graciousness. The uh, action of grace. Oh, hallelujah. I just love the words gracious, graceful, uh, in other words, it can be used that way because it means so much more than what we usually associate it with. Yeah. Extending favor among yourselves, extending favor among yourselves, blessing one another. This says forgiving yourselves, um, loving each other, amen, according to, as God also within and in union with the Christ was and is gracious or he deals gracefully, I mean favorably, to and with you folks, or in other words, he freely forgives you folks and other manuscripts say forgives us folks. Hallelujah. I love the writings that we're reading. I love the language of, of uh, Jonathan Mitchell's renderings. And, um, and I want to eat and assimilate and digest these words. Amen. I don't want them to be words on a, uh, on a paper or, or, or on a computer screen. I want them to be words of life, spirit words, words of the breath effect of God. Father, I pray tonight, this word will not leave us, but Lord, that it will become an integral part of the fiber of our being. It's Christ and the nature of Christ that we are reading about in this chapter. And I'm asking, Lord, that this will free us from falsehood, yes. free us from the lie, and that, God, we will know the truth and the reality of Jesus, yes. the truth, the way, and the life. Yes. I'm asking you, Lord, that you will bestow your favor upon all that are under the sound of my voice, that, Lord, they will live and not die, that they will be healed of all of their infirmities. Yes, yes. I speak out healing and restoration unto all the members of your vast body. I am speaking unto them the removal of hatred, of envy, of jealousy, yes. of all of these negative and death-dealing emotions that keep your people in a state of infirmity. And I pray, Lord, that your people, as they start to allow the nature of God to be manifested in them, 
that our bodies, Lord, will start to respond to love and to grace and to mercy and to compassion. Lord, that the cells of our bodies would start to respond to the words of life and salvation in Jesus Christ. That, Lord, as we study your word, as we eat it and digest it, Lord, that the very cells of our body would start to speak forth new life. Light would shine in the middle of the darkness. Amen, Lord, we believe. We believe in your power, Lord, to raise us up in your sight. Oh, we believe, Lord, that you have the power, Lord, to transfigure us. Lord, to cause our new body to swallow up our old body. That that house that is within us might swallow up this outer house. That, Lord, this outer house would be turned inward and this inner house would be outward. That, Lord, we would be changed, metamorphosis by the word, the living word, that you are almighty God. For we read in your written word, Lord, that you are that word. We thank you for both. We thank you for the living and the written word. Because one testifies of the other. And so, Father, we thank you tonight. We have heard the written word. And we have heard the living word. And I pray, Lord, that the living word will bring forth and demonstrate the power of Christ. He caught out our Baha'i until the cells of our body yes. start to renew and the aging process reverses yes. and we stop dying in our cells and that we start to live yes. In ourselves, yes. that as we live in the spirit, that we shall also live in the body. Hallelujah. I pray, Lord, in your nature, I pray that this will be done, Lord, as the time approaches. Oh, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Let it be, let it be, let it be, Jesus. As it has been written, so let it be. Thank you for it, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm telling you, uh, I am so uh, amazed uh, at at what God is doing in His people, yes. and uh, I, I just uh, I, I I wish I could spend every hour proclaiming and ministering the gospel of the kingdom of God. It is the good news of Jesus yes. Christ. Yes. Praise yes. the Lord. Um, as you've already heard, maybe uh, we're having an Easter meeting. Uh, April the 7th, 8th, and 9th, the House of the Lord is hosting it. And it will be here at the house where I do the reading room and where we do our uh, Sunday services from. Uh, it'll be close, contained. I mean, we'll have a lot of more people than we usually have in the house, and we're going to put people everywhere we can put them. Uh, and uh, I believe we're going to be okay. But if you feel the urge of the Spirit to be here, please uh, be here. And uh, uh, messenger me uh, through messenger uh, uh, if you have intentions of coming. 
uh, or you can email me at rtaranjo at comcast.net, or you can write to us at P.O. Box 0519, Dixon, D-I-C-K-S-O-N, Tennessee, 37056. We're expecting uh, different ministries here, and we're just going to go by the leading of the Lord. Uh, the main thing is, is that Jesus is going to be here, Amen. and that's good enough for me. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. I can't wait to hear what Jesus is going to tell us at this gathering. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so uh, be sure to come if the Lord tells you to come. Be, uh, come. Most of the people are staying at the Super 8 Motel in Dixon. Uh, and uh, we also have uh, Hamilton Inn. Up, uh, and all of this is up by the interstate uh, and not very far at all from our home. Um, so uh, uh, we also have a Comfort Inn, I believe, and a Motel 6 and other motels. So Google Dixon Motels and you'll see the motels that are available. Uh, but I, uh, I, I put uh, the ministry up that I'll be um, uh, paying for. Uh, I put them up at the Super 8 Motel, the the manager there, Vince, and and his wife are just wonderful people. Can't ask for a better uh, motel managers to uh, to have to deal with, and uh, they're very close friends of ours. Um, but anyway, April the seventh, eighth, and ninth, Darren Best and uh, the church, uh, Darren and Dana Best pastors, and the church. The church, much like the Ohio State University, I, I tease Darren about that all the time, uh, it is uh, going to have their memorial weekend uh, meeting, and it'll be on uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday of Memorial Day weekend. Uh, visit them on, on Facebook and uh, and get the information. I believe they have it on their website. I mean, on their Facebook page. Uh, be sure to uh, uh, go there. Uh, Bobby Jean and I are planning on being there and uh, supporting uh, Darren and Dana and the church on their meetings. And then uh, be sure to keep in mind Fourth uh, of July weekend. That'll be June the thirtieth. July the 1st and 2nd, uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. In Paris, Tennessee, Gary and Paula Gatlin will be hosting that meeting. Uh, uh, and uh, be sure uh, to come to that gathering if you can. So uh, there's meetings being set up, uh, and uh, I'm going to try my best to attend because um, I want to be a blessing. I want to show favor to everyone. Uh, and of course, uh, I, uh, I know I'll be blessed if I am a blessing. Amen. Amen. Now, Joshua Gwinnup in San Diego, California, uh, I have heard uh, that uh, they might have a meeting out in California in the San Diego area uh, in June. So if so, we'll be flying out there and uh, <laughs> my my poor wife is saying, really? <laughs> Welcome to the ministry. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. But you know what? I'm not going to let my body hold me back. I, I've come God. to that determination. Praise I'm God. not going to let my body hold me back. Uh, I am going to override it, and I'm going to believe God that... Uh, uh, I, I've done it in the past and I can do it now uh, that even if I'm not feeling too well, I'm going to minister as long as God speaks it. Amen. Yes, yes. Okay, I think that's all. Don't put your hand on that button yet. <laughs> I have too much fun with Bobby Jean. I love y'all. God bless. Bye-bye. See you uh, Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. Did I get that in? Yes. Okay. Yeah.
I mean it now. I got to go. Bye.